Hello. Hi, I need to uh, get some more light going on here. I had that happen to me the other day. I learned from uh, that meeting that my room needed some lighting as well. Um, it's a very old Hi. house. Hi. Um, Hello. I don't have an overhead light. So I'm totally dependent. Hi, on windows and side lighting, and it's really variable. Right. Okay. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi, Silas. Hi. Welcome. Hi, hey, Silas. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Hello. I think we've met. We've got two new members today, which is great. Yes. We'll go into a very full state. I think we'll be sure just one person for the uh, retreat. Yeah. So it should be awesome. I guess we don't have decisions today, so we don't have to worry about having a quorum and all that. <laughs> Although we, there's still time. Right. How are you, Philip? Are you settling in? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I, I feel like this month is it's coming, and I feel like I am um, settled in, ready, yeah. moving on forward. <laughs> so Silas Philip is a former co-chair of the Human Rights Commission. And oh, amazing. He, uh, he left and went to California and then came back a year later and now is our representative from the town government. It's oh, fantastic. <laughs> Um, hey, Rizwana, how are you? Hello. Yeah, I'm fine. How are you? How are you doing? Good, good. Getting your winter clothing out and now wearing them? Well, I'm I'm refusing. I'm going to wait till Wednesday or whenever it is that the warm weather finally takes a dive and then I'll get my winter clothing out. <laughs> yeah, that'll be nice. <laughs> Yeah, it's freezing in the morning. Yesterday, the yeah. windshield was all frozen. I was so I panicked. So I now I park it in the in the park uh, the public garage. In the park, oh. yeah. But today was okay though. Hello, is it Jay? I you go by Jay or Jay and Dan? How are well, you? Well, Jay is good. Oh, God, Jay is yeah. good. Okay. Yeah. Hello, Jay. Welcome. Thank you. How are you, all you folks doing? Good. Okay, welcome, Jay. Thank you. Nice to you? have you aboard. Yeah, well, there's a lot of work to do. All right, I like that spirit. No kidding. <laughs> Is Liz coming? Do you know, Philip? Uh, I have not heard otherwise, but I am unsure. I, I also did not reach out to anyone, so... So in uh, 601, shall we start? I mean, I could do the reading and all that of the stuff. Yeah, definitely. But uh, wanna... Jay, Jay and Silas, really quick. Did you all swear in at the town clerk office? Okay, I'm seeing a yes from Silas and Jay. Did you? Yes, yesterday. All right, perfect. Then we are good to go. You all are great and voting members. So you do have a quorum right now. Okay. All right. Well, welcome, everyone. Um, it's Wednesday, October 16th at 6.02 p.m. Uh, the Human Rights Commission is now in session. And I guess I would do a roll call first. Um, Elizabeth Haygood, she's not here. Joy Eiffel, yikes, Joy isn't here. Ms. Wanakan? Here. Uh, Debra Kolodny? Here. Silas McClellan? Here. Ronnie Parker? Here. Jay Pillay? Present, thank you. Jacinta Smith is not here, but I'm sure she'll be there for the retreat. Um, pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Um, with that, I'm really very, very happy today to welcome uh, our new members and, and Liz Haygood, I guess, will mark present. Really happy to Melka, welcome our new uh, members and maybe it's appropriate for everyone to go a little go around a little bit and say a little bit about yourself before we get to the agenda is that all right 
Okay. Um, let's let's start with uh, somebody else, uh, not the new members. So let's start with Liz, our co-chair. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. My name is Liz Haygood. I am a longtime resident of Amherst. I am uh, the co-chair right now. This is my fifth year, beginning of my fifth year on the HRC. And I do some other stuff around town in the country that you can save for another time. Just call on the next person, Liz. Uh, Rizwana? Yeah, hi. Hi, everybody. I am, uh, I've been here for two years in at this organization in the HRC. And I also am very much involved in the local, you know, happenings and uh, Quite a lot of good things have happened. I'm really happy about the facilitation and so many events. I have really uh, gained a lot from there. So I'm really happy about what's going on. And But there, uh, there's some more things we need to do. Thanks. There's one I'll just call on the next person. OK. Um, <laughs> OK, uh, let's see, uh, Deborah. Hi, good evening, and welcome, Silas and Jan John. Uh, my name is Deb Claudney. I've only been in Amherst for three years. Um, professionally, I am a rabbi and also a justice consultant. And I am thrilled to be in this area. And I think I didn't say I'm also a lawyer. And so I've been doing uh, civil rights and justice work uh, and police accountability work for over 40 years um, in Washington, D.C. and in Philadelphia and in Portland, Oregon. So I'm really um, grateful to be able to have that experience here. And Ronnie, do you want to sure. introduce yourself before? So I'm Ronnie Parker. I'm the co-chair, the other one. Um, I've been here the same time as Deb, actually. Uh, this month marks three years of having been in Amherst. Um, my exposure to human rights comes initially from studying it as a graduate student, but then later working in international development. So mostly in conflict settings in other parts of the world, not so much in the US. And I see it's a different context here. Although there's, as others have said, a lot of work to be done here, especially these days. Um, so I'm very happy to be part of this, and I will call on Jay. Yeah, I've been in the area for oh, some... Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to forget Philip. Oops, sorry, Jay. Sorry, Philip, go ahead. I thought the all those of us who are... you, you guys, I thought the two of you would go last. Oh, Philip. Okay, uh, I am the Assistant Director for Diversity, Equity, Inclusion. Um, I'm back in the town. I kind of took a year hiatus. I was also a part of this commission as well. And yeah. And Philip recruited me, so Jay? Yeah, uh, I've been in this town for, I think about 25 years now. I've been... I've been teaching at uh, Hampshire College uh, since I first came in, and uh, I've also taught at UMass. I've been a professor there for years, but I've also been a professor at some other schools. I've taught at Wesleyan University at Carleton College in Minnesota and at Middlebury College in Vermont. So I think I'm kind of moving into like warmer areas coming down south. Uh, but I was originally from South Africa, so I was born there during the years of apartheid and lived through that. And so my teachings and my research were often in those areas. And, um, um, you know, I'm very interested um, in both you know, cultures from around the world, but I'm also interested in things such as human rights. And in a side, um, you know, a distant aunt of mine by the name of Navanidham Pillay, same name, same last name as mine, was actually the head of the uh, human rights at the UN. And uh, she worked with Kofi Annan 
This was some time back. And my mom worked with her at a court in Durban, South Africa. And so I was kind of inspired by these strong women who did things locally in their communities and then for the world as well. I said, well, I mean, it's nice to be you know, teaching in schools and things like that, but you know, why not expand some of your own experiences to benefit some other folks out there? Because you do know things that are happening around the world, especially with people's cultures like, like that. So I'm very interested to know how the profile of Amherst is changing and what might we do as a body to make the you know, welcoming of these new population groups uh, more beneficial for, the, for them individually as well as for the town as a whole. Thanks, Jay. Um, yeah, so hi, I'm Silas. I use he, him pronouns. I just recently moved to Amherst in the past two months. And I, um, I'm really excited to continue developing my passion for human rights advocacy in this, this new community that I call home. And as a, a person of mixed heritage um, and professional and personal um, experience with human rights, their its policies are, are deeply personal to me. So I'm, I'm really excited to, uh, to work with you all. Thank you. Um... I am just so honored to be part of this group. It just gets stronger and stronger. Thank you. Um, all right. Well, are there any announcements? Okay. I'll take that. I was going to just say that today is Unity Day. I have my Unity shirt on from Amherst High School. Most of the staff wore these shirts. We bought them. Um, and I think it's important to people know that, um, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world in which we are not kind. And um, I just want to remind us that, you know, even though we have basic human rights, one of the basic human rights is just to be able to be. And when we're kind to one another, we actually enhance that for each other and one another and yourself as well. So... That's all. Um, is this where I'm supposed to do reports on other committees? Um, if you, I think we have to go to public comment before you do reports. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. All righty, that's I'll all. I'll call out for reports when it comes up, but let me say that. I don't that. have the, script, the thingy in front of me, the, the okay. script. Is. Um, thanks for your reflections, Liz. And if anyone else, since we're in a time of particular difficulty for our country and the world, if there's anyone else who wants to just reflect a little bit, not a long thing, but a little bit, um, please feel free to do so, as Liz Jeff did. Yes, one of the things that I wanted to say about, you know, these conflicts is that I learned a lot. Uh, I would say that I learned some things, at least from the South African experience. You know, we were segregated out by law, it was a part of the constitution, legal segregation. And so when you live through that and you see how in a post-apartheid world, they start to come together and how did it happen? There was an important process that actually went on at that time, which I think could actually benefit us uh, and the world in general, if it, if it took those kinds of lessons from South Africa. Uh, at that time, uh, you know, Bishop Tutu was a person who had, um, I guess a reconciliation committee, right, set up. And he had people simply talk to each other. And in the past, you had police officers who had killed, you know, political prisoners. Their families were still smarting and hurting from those killings. And they confessed in open court. And there was no you know, punishment, no jail time, no nothing. But the idea of simply talking and getting to know each other and to humanize each other before each other is a very powerful lesson. 
And my feeling, certainly as an ethnomusicologist, is that when people know each other, you don't want to kill each other. And I truly do not believe that the people in Israel know the people in the Palestine. I don't believe the people in the Palestine know the people in Israel. And if you go through each place like that, we are living off of stereotypes for each other. And once you get to know each other, you can take okay. those lessons and ap apply that in a, in a town like Amherst, where we can get communities together before anything erupts. Thanks, Jay. Any, like a short thought? I just thought because Liz came forward. Anyway, I'll say Liz's reflections made me think also before coming to this meeting about some of, about the conflicts around us and trying to feel centered around it somehow. And there's a lot going on. Anyway, um, so um, let's move on to public comment then. Are there any members of the public right now? No, there's none. Uh, no, there's no one. So I'll just skip that whole part and go to member reports. And I know that um, Liz, you had something to report. So we'll start with you and then others can make their reports as well. You're muted. There it is. I, I'm the one of the most, for the new people, I am the most techno technologically challenged of the bunch, okay? <laughs> um, I did listen in on a little bit of the um, CSSJC on um, last Wednesday night. I'm not sure if anybody else logged in. There was a report on the um, committee that's looking into the um, Youth Empowerment Center. It's kind of stalled, I think. Um, they know that people have um, the right inclinations, but it's been a, a long time and we need to um, support them in pushing this agenda forward. Um, I don't know if Philip and Pamela want to, well, I don't know if Pamela wasn't there, but I know Philip was, want to expand on that. And the only other thing that I was able to be a part of is the, um, there was a little bit of discussion with Cress and it seems like, um, the town or our budget is, um, not supporting additional or too many additional Cress members. And that is concerning to me. Um, the only other thing that I wanted to report is that I, and hopefully most of you, will be at town council meeting on Monday to hear any um, feedback and give any feedback to the town council about our previous year's work. I'm not sure exactly what time we're going to be on. I was hoping that they would be able to give me a time because I do have um, family coming in out of town, so. Six, 6.45 was the time that I was given to kind of estimate for. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And before I log off, for those of you who are new, Pamela Young has logged on and she may want to introduce herself before we continue. So uh, good evening, I am um, Liz, thanks for, um, recognizing me, but I had an opportunity to meet with Silas and with Jay before, so I think they both know who I am. Yeah. So could I ask a question, Liz? Uh, I wasn't able to attend the CSSJC meeting, but I heard parts of it later. I know that uh, the youth, the person, I finally understood that there's a person responsible for the Youth Empowerment Center, and I understood some of the constraints. In the meantime, while the, we have been debating back and forth, 80 Acres has already set up something for youth. And I wondered, one of the questions that wasn't asked, but I was curious about, and maybe you or uh, Philip would know, uh, if the town has thought about some sort of cooperation or partnership or collaboration, I don't know what exactly is the right word, but working together with 80 Acres to make it happen instead of engaging in a parallel process. <clears throat> so I know that when 80 Acres was talking about this, I had requested, um, or it wasn't even a request, I had suggested or gave some input 
into um, reaching out to people like Deborah and Edgar and some other um, town members who were part of the Men's Resource Center. Um, I know that Deborah's um, now deceased husband was very much a part of that. And so was Edgar. And you guys know, some of you know Edgar. He was the one who ran the basketball um, program when we had the um, youth uh, Youth Achievement Awards in June. And so there are people in the town who can help push this off the ground. I do believe that 80 Acres is its own entity and they are going full force with their own agenda and naming a, a Youth Action Center uh, after Barry and Judy Brooks. For those of you who don't know them, they are longtime educators and mentors to many of um, uh, the educators in the Amherst public school systems, as well as being um, host parents for the ABC program. In the early 70s, they you know pretty much raised their children under social justice. Um, they're social justice warriors as well as educators. And so the 80 Acres has decided to name the Youth Action Committee after Barry and Judy Brooks. They are not working with the town around their vision. And so I'm not sure if Pamela and Philip want to weigh in on that. Um, I think that there is room for um, collaboration. And I also think there's room for individuality in this endeavor. So that's just my personal opinion on the subject. Yeah, Yeah, I think you uh, said it very well. I will say uh, just to clarify just because I know that Ray will probably listen in is that um, Ray is not responsible for the Youth Empowerment Center. He um, is on the talks about it, but he is not responsible um, for the center. And as far as um, what was the other part of it? I'm losing my words here. I was up at seven o'clock <laughs> morning movement this morning with the tire, with the skull, uh, with the 80 acres, 80 acres, um, you all heard about their youth empowerment or youth center that they're calling for um, the time that the town did. They have already. Right, yep. And so um, the town kind of heard it at the same time that everybody else has heard it. And we have not been in talks with um, 80 acres. So that I can say that there have not been any talks, but I know that there is room for some collaboration, some type of, um, I know Paul is open up to the idea, but there has not been any movement on the idea. And I see that Pamela has her hand up and she will probably say it a lot better than I can. <laughs> no, I was just gonna ask um, for those who weren't able to attend the CSSJC meeting, it um it might be worthwhile to describe the re the relationship that you and Ray um have or your responsibility of overseeing the work that's going on in the town and what some of the individual de town departments are doing around youth em um, empowerment. So, Cress has some initiatives that they're pulling forth. DEI has some initiatives that we're um, pushing forth, and um, Rec as well. And um, and Philip and Ray are sharing responsibility for directing uh, the work in town. Um, I got in trouble for calling it a task force, so I don't know what to call the group. But there are a group of town um, employees and staff who are who are working on youth empowerment, and Philip and Ray are sort of you know, spearheading that group. Um, and the various town, you know, the three de town departments that I mentioned are each um, contributing some initiatives to that. Um, and the idea is that there would be programming this year while discussions continue about long-term programming and, you know, um, long, long-term um, acquiring a, or building a building. So I think that's that gives a fuller picture of what the town's efforts are. Okay, uh, other reports? 
Um, I would like to say that I have brought up with the, uh, I think I've mentioned some months back an interest in uh, the lack of right to vote for residents who are non-citizens in Amherst. And, you know, as an immigrant and naturalized citizen myself, I see this as a very important thing to be able to vote. And it seems where I lived before, every resident voted in local elections. And it's sort of strange to me that we have a lot of residents who are just not able to participate in our local uh, decision-making process, um, not only by not being able to vote, but there are language issues, there are all kinds of uh, blocks, and I'm really committed to making something happen in that regard. And I, my report is that I've talked to the League of Women Voters. I'm part of their racial justice committee. And um, they've promised to help make this happen. I don't think there's resistance in Amherst, but it has to be brought to the state level for a vote. And that's why I thought the League was a good place to go because they are networked across the state. And they've told me they think it will take several years, but one has to start somewhere. And my report is that, you know, I've told them and gotten it on their agenda for the future. Uh, for job, the new Mommy. people here, and I don't know if everyone knows this, 30% of our, um, of the population of Amherst um, is of uh, other ethnicities, uh, not non-white. Everybody who's non-white represents I think 30% or around a third of Amherst population. And among them are a lot of people, not the African-Americans, but a lot of people who are not citizens. Deb? Yeah, I just had a question to clarify. Um, I'm assuming that it's the entirety of Massachusetts that needs to get this law passed for the entirety of Massachusetts, not that it needs to go to the state mm -hmm. legislature for Amherst. So. It's because oh. otherwise it, yeah, that that's my imagination. Right. So right. I'm just wondering if there's been some thought put into what role either we on this commission or Amherst in general can play. And um, my guess is that, I don't know, our rep is Joe Comerford um, and Mindy. Dumb. Dumb. Um, Dumb a representative. And so at some point, maybe it would be great for someone from the commission to speak with the two of them or one of them to see um, strategically move forward. Well, there are many steps before the elected officials get involved. And so once we do get started, and as I've said, I've mentioned it and got it on the agenda and people are agreeable within the Amherst League, uh, but I was told the first thing that would be required is some kind of study. And I don't even know what the study is, but once we actually do something beyond agreeing that it needs to be done, um, it would be worth having someone from the league come and talk about what the process is and discuss what our role might be and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, and once we have what we need, we can then go to our elected officials and push to get it on the agenda for, for a decision. That's what I was told, years. But I still feel quite excited that I found somebody who could reach at the state level who's interested in this issue. So that's my report. Any others? Okay. Um, so we're moving on to action and discussion items, DEI press update. Uh, I'll do the press one first because that one is going to be easier. So Camille is not going to be able to join us tonight. Um, she's having a family emergency, so she will not be here tonight. Um, but I will plug in that um, they are looking to hire still. So anybody who knows of any viable candidates, please encourage them to apply to the Crest Department for becoming a responder. The DEI update, um, I have that the Becoming Beloved Community event that we held last month was well attended. We had about 25 people in the room. 
Um, a lot of great conversations, a lot of people um, saying that they wish that we could have more time and more events like that. So really wonderful. Um, overall, the topic was America's racial history. And we I think we did successfully cover about a good chunk of it and enough to get the conversation going, if you will. Obviously, not all of it, definitely not in two hours, but a, a decent amount to get the conversation going. And then our next um, Becoming Beloved Community event is November 21st, and that is going to be Navigating Differences, and that is at the Bing Center at 6 o'clock. Uh, youth and our youth programming, um, we kind of discussed that, but um, particular for the DEI office, we have an AmeriCorps member who started, I think we mentioned this last month, um, their name is Melina. And so they are helping out with youth programming. Um, so we are moving forward with kind of a workshop model for two incentives, which will be civics and local government. And then another one, entrepreneurship, which will then have kind of an end goal of um, you being able to sell items at our event that we are coming up with, and that kind of leads into the next topic there for the update is that the event um, that per this commission's recommendation to have one event a year um, is going to be known as the Amherst Global Village Festival is um, what we're calling it. And so that is going to be having vendors from around kind of the globe, if you will, uh, we're gonna call it our global marketplace and then that component will have a youth or junior global marketplace. And that is where after the workshop, the youth will then be able to sell their products at that area. Um, the Linguistics Heritage Month that is celebrated by the Amherst Public Schools will be partnering with us. So they will have an area in the um, town common as well as some food trucks. And then we're looking to have performers. And so when that goes live, we'll have more of a form kind of going out there and happening. Um, the date for that, I just got confirmation that um, we reserved the town common for April 5th. So I do know that is a Saturday and I apologize, Deb, but that is um, the day that it's going to be at. And so the time frame for um, that the start time is going to be 10 o'clock to six o'clock. And of course, any help beforehand is greatly appreciated from you all. Uh, the last that I have for an update for DEI is that we have signed on with a consultant for the Resident Oversight Board. And that consultant is Deb. She, <laughs> her, her and, um, oh, Deb, you're gonna have to forgive me right now. I'm blanking on your your partner there. Brian Kaur, and yeah. I'll say a little about, bit about him. He is the past president of NACOL, which is the National Association of Citizen Oversight Bodies or Oversight of Law Enforcement Agencies or something like that. Um, and he's been working in this field of police oversight um, professionally at uh, as the Cambridge staff person for their initiative for like 12 or 15 years and then like 20 years before that. So um, with me as like the local person who did a chunk of <clears throat> data collection work and uh, relationship building with folks, residents and Amherst and him as the uh, probably the most revered expert on this topic in the country, um, it's a great team. Awesome. Um, there's the question. Uh, Deb, what happened to your report? Because I have not seen it. I'm wondering if it's been released and how we can access it. Yeah, maybe Pamela can answer that. I did submit the report at the end of February. And I know in the me first meeting that Brian and I had with the DEI office and Paul, we mentioned that it hadn't been released yet and that it needed to. So Philip or Pamela, do you have any updates on that? So I, I'm, my hope is that it will be released in public next week. We have been working with the communications director to create a resident oversight board web, um, web page on the town. Um, and uh, I know that uh, Sam Giffen, who is the communications director, needs to complete some conversations with Paul and then 
all of that information would be public in, in one location. So that's the plan that I, um, as far as I know it to be. Right, thank you. And I realized I gave all this glowing like resume for Brian uh, before I got to, but I didn't say anything about my work in this area. Before I came to Amherst, I, um, I worked in Portland, Oregon for five years on police accountability in a variety of roles. First as a clergy person working directly with police around issues of concern in the community, and then um, as a leader and an executive director of a coalition called Portland United Against Hate, um, which was dealing with a massive uptick in hate incidents against um, you know, people of color and religious minorities and LGBTQ people because, you know, somebody was in office who was encouraging that. So um, at any rate, uh, so I brought that work here and very excited about it. And thank you very much for filling us in on the release of the report. Awesome. Yeah. So just to be clear, the, the reports being released um, with an announcement about a resident oversight board, which I'm assuming was a recommendation of the report and has been a recommendation, I guess, in the past of other reports. Mm -hmm. um, so I just want to confirm that, but also for the new people, there's there's been in the last five years, a bunch of studies about this whole question of racial differences in Amherst, and I think, um, you know, the series that Pamela and Philip are talking about, I think is really an important response to that. But also there are written reports by the, what's called the CSWG, which did a similar report to Deb's report. And I think all of, it's really important that you read that stuff if you want to get a good understanding of what has been done and what, you know, because what we're going to do is now going to be building on these studies that have been done that that have some threads and some consistencies across them. So I'm wondering, I mean, I'm happy to give you links if you'd like, but maybe uh, it would be good for Philip to put it in a place as pre-reading before the uh, uh, before the retreat. I know Jacinta probably hasn't seen it either. Pamela? So I, I just want to make sure that everyone uh, understands what I mean when I say that the um, town manager and the communications director are going to create a, a web page about the um, resident over the next next step of the resident oversight board. So the first step that Deb completed earlier in the year was around community engagement. And then um, uh, gosh, it's been so long, I've forgotten the dates myself, but I, I believe it was um, last fall, late last fall, there was a second RFP process, so a request for proposals um, to seek technical assistance on standing up the resident oversight board. So uh, we were going to hire consultants to work with the town to create policies, uh, to train the individuals who would be serving on the resident board. So all of those activities that would actually bring the board into being. And what was um, signed recently was a contract for that technical assistance. So um, part of the recommendation from the first report and um, one of the uh, activities of this, of the consultant work that um, Deb and Brian Cora are going to, to do is to seek a small group of individuals to work on um, defining various roles and policies. So it's, there's not a big announcement like, oh, we have everyone that we've selected for the resident oversight board. I just want to be clear about this. This is the beginning of the second stage um, uh, around technical assistance. Um, yes. And so the, the on that page, and we're happy to send um, Jay and Silas the information on that page, the um, all of those prior reports would would live as background in, information. So Sam, who's the communications director, you know, that's been brought to her attention. As I said, she has 
some conversations that she wants to have with the town manager, but the goal is for all that information about the former reports as well as the activities of the current consultants to be in one location and to be public. And just so everyone understands, there's um, four standard types of resident oversight boards or citizen oversight boards. And then because there's about 700 different flavors of hybrids, the the uh, the roles that the board play and the responsibilities of the board and the technical documentation and procedures that they use vary in every municipality. So you can't just like, you know, stand it up. We want it, we got to stand it up. And so this group that's being convened will represent the entire spectrum of stakeholders, including, you know, someone from the CSSJC and somebody from the CSWG. And um, I think we talked about press. And I think we talked about having someone from HRC, you know, involved too. So there will be a broad, broad uh, group, but not too broad. It's going to be like maybe eight or 10 people <laughs> so that it can move forward expeditiously. <laughs> right. And so per the town manager's request, thank you for that, Deb. Um, the What he's looking for for um, committees is the CSSJC having a representative as well as the HRC having a representative. So it would just be one representative from the group, whoever you all decide collectively who that representative is. As far as for staff, it will be Cress involved as well as the DEI office, the HR um, department, and as well as the town manager. Could I ask a different kind of question? How many people are in HR in the town? Like when you say the HR department, how many is it? It's a department of three. <laughs> three, I see, okay. So there's an HR uh, director, an HR manager, and a um, part-time, uh, I don't know her title, but we'll say uh, assistant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah, um, I didn't think it was very big. Right, and I will add that on, I haven't seen her lately, but um, there's also been, a former HR director who has worked on some aspects of HR, Kay Zolgar. Um, and the rationale for including HR is, of course, any of the recommendations from the Resident Oversight Board will have implications for collective bargaining um, um, mm -hmm. with, uh, with the police department. So someone needs to be there for that purpose. Okay, so finally, I don't want to drag this out too much, but I did have a couple of questions about press. Um, and I don't know if you guys have the answer or not, but I read in the paper that the finance committee had recommended cutting off funds for press. Um, I don't know if it was to fund, cutting off funds to hire more people or cutting off funds. So I'm wondering if you have information on that. And the second question that I have is that we've heard Camille say over and over again, uh, that one of the uh, barriers that Crest faced uh, was that they couldn't get the dispatch calls from the police and they couldn't do it because of some insurance issue, something administrative. And for some reason, that insurance issue has never been solved. And not only that, from my point of view, it doesn't look like I haven't heard about whether there's a pathway to solving it in the future, like next year, maybe. So I'm just wondering what sort of discussions have been had about this. You know, like if you hit a barrier, you think about how you're going to get around it in the short and long term. But there does, you know, they've been at it for a while, not just her. Although I think she's been really diligent, and I like what she's doing. But is she is she getting to the police union that's preventing this from happening? And is there a possibility of a solution, insurance wise? to address the safety issues that Crest was designed to address. So, um, you know, I have not, <laughs> I, I don't, don't know of an obstacle that's related to insurance. And so I'm uh, really unsure what that uh, is in reference to. Um, I'm sorry, I think she said liability when okay, she was with right, us. Right. <laughs> is that legally a different term? It is it's talking yes. to someone who's not a lawyer. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I the there are a couple of things that have been um, 
I, I don't want to, that have been, I guess I'll say obstacles uh, for lack of a better term to Crest being fully um, active. And one was that there was no collective bargaining done prior to the department being established. Um, so that of course caused a, a great delay because you, you um, the police union has a right to impact bar bargain for any sort of change in work conditions, major change in work conditions, and this would have would qualify for that. That um, that first hurdle was uh, was crossed last year, um, while just at the same time that the interim leadership team was uh, put in place to direct the activities of Cress. So, and that was done by the HR by the HR department. The collect that first part of the collective bargaining um, with the police only covered a certain a few certain types of actions because the department had not been fully uh, described or all of the roles and responsibilities weren't fully um, fleshed out. Um, there it, there will be and there continues to be a need to to have some conversations with the police. And I, you know, I, I think that sometimes members of the public think that this is a one and done, like you go and you have a conversation with the police and you get the collective bargaining agreement done and then, you know, you're, you're done with it. Um, but um, the reality I would say of the situation is that as uh, Cress evolves, um, and its role expands, there will be a need for additional conversations around collective bargaining. Because each time, if there's an impact with the police department, there is gonna be a right by the police department to do impact bargaining. Um, the interim leadership team was um, uh, successful in starting to build a relationship with the dispatch and so we started last fall by um, identifying certain different call types and starting to open the door for dispatch. That continues, that work continues. Um, the grant administrator in the Crest Department and a member of, I mean, in the Crest Department and a member of the police department are working to finalize all of those, you know, missing pieces about roles and responsibilities and to and to write what I would call their policy manual. And again, this is my term. I don't know what they're gonna call it. I'm just using that as a descriptor, right? So that so that things are are moving along all, along on that line. Um, I I don't know specifically what the liability question is that that um, Camille might have referred to. I know that the interim leadership team um, received a lot of questions, not only from police, but also um, from fire about liability issues. Um, and, and in part that was because there had not been collective bargaining with those uh, units before. <clears throat> and excuse me, because um, there had not been clarity about what the liability roles were under the Commonwealth for, um, for non-police or non-fire to respond in, in certain situations. When the interim leadership team was in place, there was a meeting with police and fire and the interim leadership team and legal counsel around some of those issues. So I know that the conversations have been started and there have been um, progress, but I have really sort of tried to step far, far away <laughs> And not be intimately involved, and in, you know, in the fine detail work. I so I I don't know, but that sort of gives I think a, a little bit of an from what I do know that occurred during during the time that the interim leadership team was in place. Right, and having been on some calls with Camille um, last week with the CSSJC, I know that she has mentioned the um, SOP standard operating procedures that she is working with to get the department able to respond to 
situations. I think um, she says it very well. So I'll use a direct quote from her or try and direct quote her. But uh, the police department and fire have been around for 200 plus years. And so it is very clear in kind of what their response is into situations. And Cress is a new department that is trying to define those types of situations. So definitely having those SOPs um, in place that she's working on is going to help out with that um, aspect of it. And as far as to the other part of your question with funding, um, I mean, I, I think that's for the town council, a question for them. You're muted. I said, okay, I won't go on anymore. Thank you. Um, any other thoughts on this before we move to the next agenda item? Okay. HRC retreat. Yay. <laughs> so I'm not sure who's going to talk about it. The date is November 17th. Um, it, I mean, it's all the up. The date is November seventeenth. It will be um at the Bain Center is where I got the location and the large activity room. Um, and I know that at the last time at our meeting, we were discussing time frames and kind of agenda items. So, other than that, as the liaison liaison, that's all I have. I think you all were having a conversation to discuss what it is you all would want to do there. So I want to jump in and say that I ask, is now the time for us to decide when we mm -hmm. start and when we end <laughs> and to yeah. determine what the agenda is? Or, I mean, I, I think last meeting we said there would be two agenda items at least. One would be um, to put an action, first year action plan together for the approved uh, three-year plan, which for the new folks, it's called Building a Culture of Welcome, Justice, and the Celebration of Human Rights in Amherst Through Prevention and Accountability. And there was you know, an education piece um, and then an accountability piece. And um, yeah, so I do have a draft first year action plan and we'll review that at the meeting. And I believe, um, Jacinta, uh, I think we saw something. I'm assuming it was from Jacinta on the um, bylaws. Yep. So there's also been some pre-work on that. So those are two major agenda items that we know are happening, right? All right. So I'm sorry, I'm rambling. I asked a question. We need to do we need to determine when we start and when we end, and do we need to decide on additional agenda items? um today oh and also liz had talked about doing a um getting to know you exercise so that we can build um you know build our relationships with one another so that's a third agenda item i would agree so that we need to discuss the agenda and figure out what the timing would be um i think that uh because the bylaws hopefully will be approved next week um uh, for those of you who don't know, the bylaws started certainly before I got here. I think Philip was working on them when he was co-chair. Um, but they've been reviewed, reviewed, reviewed to death. And they have now gone to the town council. And we really, when we're at that meeting, need to press for them to approve it then and there. Um, and um, the other piece is, of course, our plan for the future. And maybe... Uh, I don't know, you talked in general about it. Maybe this is the time Deb, for you to talk about what we're planning to do more specifically. Because we, one of the things the Human Rights Report, have you all read that? One of the changes, the report, you should look at it before the town council meeting. Uh, one of the changes we uh, sought or we're seeking in that report is to take a much more proactive stance on uh, educating about human rights and differently documenting um, the state of rights in Amherst. And I, you know, Deb, do you wanna say more, a little bit more about that? And we'll discuss and finalize at the uh, retreat, but I think you all should be familiar with our thinking before we go to that 
town council meeting. I don't think we should discuss too much because we're missing a few members, but I'll just say that um, the three-year plan had the first year focusing on the education and creation of a video and um, the invitation of all of municipal staff and um, every business uh, leader to also view the video and do kind of like a self-test afterwards. Just like when we become a member of the commission, we need to watch a video on our uh, conflict of interest and kind of learn how that works and then do a self-test. So very similar to that. Have you guys done that yet, Silas and Jay? It's really boring, but anyway, you'll have to, you have to do it. You have to do it, I think. You have to do it. I mean, it's yeah. not sure. It's just, you know, I don't know. It's not like an action movie or something. At any rate, um, so something very similar to that, something very similar to that. And I just created like a time frame, a, a, you know, uh, of each stage of that. And also to have um, the DEI department um, do some work in creating a strategy to ensure that, that the town and school system hiring promotion performance evaluation celebrates diversity and reduces and soon eliminates discrimination and other um, and integrates other HRC identified values. Anyway, so those two components don't need to go into any detail now with that because that's the work of the retreat. Um, yeah, so I don't think we need to talk about that much unless someone has a question. But I urge you to read, it's like a two page uh, proposal on how we move forward on um, this three year plan. And then this strategic kind of one year task, I guess, action plan. Um, can we get that out to everybody like right after this meeting? All right, in preparation for the retreat, great. I think that's all that and, needs to be. And also the previous reports, the ones I mentioned, they're sort of long they're, and they're important. I don't know when this public announcement is going to come up, but maybe is there a way that uh, Jay and Silas can access those sooner? Because I know they're online. They're on the town's website. I can, I can send on. out um, something, but I will say Just that it will link would be. be tomorrow and probably not after this yeah, meeting, but yeah. I will send it tomorrow. Yeah, no. Yeah, just before the town does its thing. Thanks. Yep. Philip. Sorry, Pamela. I ever say after this meeting, I never mean at night. I <laughs> right. <Yes>. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pamela, you had your hand up. Yeah, so I was just going to suggest that um, uh, the co chairs uh, provide Philip with a list of everything that you want in the packet. And since it's likely to be, um, you know, a few items, if, if we have that list, we can send it out well in advance um, because November 17th, even though it seems far away is right around the corner. And um, so. Oh, and I just realized is November 17th gonna be too late to get the HRC representative name to you guys or Paul? for the resident oversight board work, I think it will be. And so when will that name need to be identified? And how is that name gonna be identified? So I, ideally you would make that decision during this meeting <laughs> because, um, uh, you know, I think Paul will be making um, the, the decisions about the composition of that group next week. All right, so I'm sorry we're in the middle of a discussion about the retreat, but um, I just want us to remember that we need a name by the end of this meeting. <laughs> Who's going to represent? Well, don't we have Don't we have you on that already, or do we get another person? Which means yeah, the HRC yeah, has two people. Because I I am not a decider; I'm a facilitator. So Brian and my role is like. Um, expert information about what's happening in the world. That's more of Brian's role. And my role is with, I have 40 years as a conflict resolution practitioner as facilitator and, you know, supporting the group and using kind of interest-based problem solving and conflict resolution technologies to reach agreements. So yeah, I'm a third party. I, su so, yeah. I suggest that if Jake and, um, uh... Uh, be included in that. That'll be nice. 
Well, rather than nominate mm -hmm. other people, yeah. I'm well, not curious if somebody wants to volunteer. Yeah, somebody wants to I really think that I would prefer a process because some people aren't here, especially like Jacinta I'm thinking of. Uh, I would prefer to get something about what you're looking for, just like a few bullets even, that could circulate to the commission and then people could uh, speak up or are we not allowed to do that under the rules? Right. Because if we allowed are allowed to meet, we're not allowed to do that. You're, you're not allowed to deliberate outside of the uh, public meeting. So um, no, I mean people cannot volunteer based on uh, so based on um, the thing saying we need a human rights commission volunteer. Right. So if, seems... what would you do? How would you make the decision if more than one person volunteered? We would just send them to the <laughs> town manager. I mean, so, I think it's sort of unfair to at the end of the meeting to sort of say. We haven't talked to the people who aren't here. I mean, it just especially I'm especially since there is someone who might be very interested in this sort of thing. Silas has his hand. But, up. You know, like, I'm willing to go with whoever wants to go. Silas, go ahead. Um, oh, I just had a quick question on in terms of rules and procedures. If someone were to volunteer in this meeting, would it there be any capacity for if another person also from the Human Rights Commission was interested to, after the fact, um, like, could we change our representative if we created a process for that? Or is it like whoever is named is then the person here on after? So here's the thing. I would like to say that's... No, um, right now we have a quorum. So if somebody in this All meeting right. would like to do that, and we, we voted on it tonight, you missed the meeting, so sad, too bad. If there's somebody not, if there's no one in this meeting that would like to do that, um, we may have to have a different discussion, which would then mean possibly having an emergency meeting next week just for that saying, but we would have to post it by Friday. That's how okay, that Okay, let's, let's call for that. volunteers then, but I do not like um, changing because I did this at one point. I don't remember what the thing was, but the person who signed up volunteered couldn't do it. And I was inserted into a process in the middle. And it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. I don't think I was nearly as effective as I might be because I came in the middle. So I think we should now call for volunteers and do what Liz did and vote them in now. If I, I just want to clarify that you are not volunteering to be on the resident oversight board. You are volunteering to be on a stakeholder committee that's going to basically write the bylaws and the charter for the board. And then that document, those documents are going to go to the town council for approval. So, um, yeah, you're doing the stand up work, the setup work. And then folks will be identified to become members of the board. So you're not signing up to a three-year term on another board. You know, it's just hopefully, you know, um, three to five meetings over the next couple of months. Okay. Are there volunteers? And Jay's name has been put out. Jay, are you interested? Are there other volunteers? Well, I, I think that, you know, I mean... I mean, I've just joined and I'm on a learning curve. So I think somebody else who uh, is invested in this, you know, probably from, um, I think an organizational point of view should be the person that, you know, not me who is just learning the ropes. Yeah, I just want to um, just um, tell, uh, share uh, with everybody that I won't be here after the 17th, basically, you know, Thanksgiving for a couple of months. So that is one of the reasons that I don't want to volunteer. Great. So we know that Rizwana and Jay are not volunteering. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, is there Silas, anyone you'd like to volunteer? <laughs> Silas, because I actually think that it doesn't matter if you don't know all this history. You're going to read a little, you're going to be at the retreat, 
um, I, I think it's a pretty impressive group. And I think that by reporting back to the commission, you'll get more information and back and forth. I think every anyone in this uh, group of boxes and on the screen in front of me can do it. I know that uh, Deb early on refused to be a co-chair because she said, oh, I need to be on it for two years to learn enough to do it. But we all know Deb could have done it that day. So don't underestimate what you can do because the people here have a lot of experience and are smart and capable and thoughtful. And there are benefits to having somebody who can bring that outside experience. It doesn't have to be somebody from the inside. This is my view. So I call on the new people. Are you interested? And I expand that call to Ronnie and Liz. Don't exclude yourselves. Everybody who has- I'm only- I may as well give you a reason. I'm excluding myself because I'm not good at writing procedures and things of that sort. Mm -hmm. Honestly, if it were to be on the resident oversight committee, I would do it. But I'm not good at doing this stuff. I don't have a lawyer's mind. So um, let me. So I don't think I'm the best representative of the HRC Sometimes for you that. You don't need a lawyer's mind. Sometimes you need a common sense mind. And so let me that's all I'm saying about that. In all likelihood, this group is not writing the rules and regs. The group is going to be discerning. Do we want this kind of role or that kind of role? Do we want to have, um, do, is the, are the police going to um, review complaints or is the board going to review complaints or is, are we going to hire a third party to review complaints? I am going to write the rules and regs that flow or rather the bylaws that flow from the decisions that are made by this committee. Because yeah, that it's just, it's too tedious and it's just not writing that kind of stuff by committee make, it's given me hives just to think about it. So it's the top level decisions. Is it gonna be X or is it gonna be Y? Is it gonna be A, is it gonna be B? So here's what I'm gonna say. Well. I will say that I would volunteer. It has to be known that beginning on the 25th of November through the second Saturday in August is my silly season. Um, one of the things that, I, Jay, how do you say your name, sir? I don't want to miss, is it just Jay or is it Jay Andron or how, how? Because I want to make sure I get your name correct. You have to unmute yourself, darling. You got to press the little back then it's got a mute button. But anyway, oh, there you go. Okay, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, Jay's fine, you know, Jay Andron is fine. Um, but the, I guess the fastest way is to just go with the 10th letter of the alphabet. Okay. J in silence. One of the things that I said at the beginning of the meeting when I introduced myself is there's some things that I do that I, it's not for now. So I'm going to say it now so that you understand what my perspective is. Um, I am heavy in officiating track and field. I travel the country doing so. Um, this is my second term on the Human Rights Commission. And when I joined for the second term, I said I would give them a year. That year ended in June and I'm still here. Mm -hmm. So when I went to um, certain individuals, two of them are in this room, Philip and Pamela. And I said, hey, it's time for me to beg off. And then I went to someone else who's not in this room. The comment was 10% of me was better than 90% of somebody else. Therefore, <laughs> I have decided to weather the storm as much as I can. However, knowing that I am going to start being away a lot. So, Deborah, if we need to we can, make the meetings. If we can get this done, here's the other thing. There are a lot of times on this commission that I haven't been able to be at a meeting or haven't been able to be at a function, but have done the behind the scenes work to make it happen. So it, I do have a lot of input 
when it comes to some of the activities and the social um, um, gatherings that we have um, sponsored or co-sponsored. Um, so it's not like I disappear, but I'm just not here a lot. The way, um, the, way the committee is going to work is um, in, it's going to be in the room. You got to be in the room when it happens. I'll so do it. You're going to do it? Yeah. I'm the thing is I am here. I'm closing my business this month. And I'm moving into retirement and I'm not going anywhere till the first week of till February, actually. All right. Well, thank you, Ronnie, because I was going for to a few days. I also know that I was gonna be gone from November twenty fifth no, to I can 9th. focus on it. It's right. it's exactly. just that it's not that it's not my strength, this kind of thing about Ronnie, it you're going to know I don't have to write rules. Ronnie, okay. you're going to be great. I'm and Liz, great. even though you need to be in the room for that when it happens, when you're in town, we're going to have coffee. Okay. <laughs> we'll have coffee and talk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Unless Jay wants to do it, I'm going to give you the chance, Jay, to say yes or no, given what you've heard. Because we're both around, right? You're not going anywhere for the next few months, or are you? You're muted. He's on here twice too. How did that happen? He's on his phone and his computer. Oh, well, there you go. Told you I'm computer illiterate. Stop it. <laughs> okay. Well, we're not going to, we're not hearing from him. So I'm not sure what to do. Looking at the clock, 7.09. So well, can what I is just... happening is that, is that I was charging up the, uh, the computer that is about to be dead. Oh, okay. And so I'm on the phone here now. All righty. Okay. Um, one of the so things before I say yes, what do you want to say, Jay? Do you? I mean, I know you're also here, and you've heard what it is more from Deb. Do you want to? I want to give you the chance to say yes or no. I completely, I completely support Rani doing it. <laughs> Well, All thank right. you, Ron, for for, for, got it. for stepping up. And before we stop, Deborah, you muted her. Before we stop that, remind we have to go back to the retreat. We got sidetracked, and I have not forgotten that. So what's the start <laughs> time? Nine. Yes, no, maybe. Hello, nine okay for everyone? All right. Nine on a Saturday, okay. And just generally to, in rough to go over the agenda. Sunday, I believe. No, isn't the 17th on a Sunday? It's a Sunday. Thank you. Oh, it's a Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Okay, nine on a Sunday. All right. So is that what you're proposing? When yes. we discussed this a month ago, some folks were saying four hours, some folks were saying eight hours. I want to just check in on the number of hours. I have a standing every Sunday obligation. I can come at nine o'clock if we're going to have an eight hour meeting. Um, I was wondering if anybody was interested in splitting the puppy and going at six hours, starting at like I think, 11. Pardon? I think nine, um, uh, eight hours is a long time to be meeting. I agree. I, yeah. I think that six hours with, um, a couple of breaks, a couple of bathroom breaks, and a half hour, 45 minute lunch break in there is is standard. Um, I think that um, we, which is a good thing and sometimes not a good thing, but a good thing mostly is that we have a lot of things to say. And when we say them, they tend to lead towards um, how we're feeling about things and how we need to move forward. And that's the good thing. However, when we're trying to stick with a time schedule, we need to be able to um, tamper ourselves to saying what we need to say and then leaving it as opposed to defending it, which was what we can sometimes do, right? Yeah. So um, if we had a nine o'clock, we did an icebreaker for about an hour, Pamela, yes, because that's usually about a time for an icebreaker. Um, and then, go into the first agenda item 
work on that for an hour, hour and a half. So that's 9, 10, 11, 30. What's that first item? Whichever. It doesn't matter. Whichever item you decide. I don't, have... I don't care if it's the first right. or second. But for me, it's hard to talk about time if I don't know what we're talking about. So here's the thing. We we, Deborah, Deborah came up with two agenda items and the icebreaker. Right. I don't really and care. what are they? First. Well, one is her proposal. I don't either. One is the and the other is the bylaws. The other. To see what work flows out of the bylaws. That's okay. what we're to prepare. So. Why work flows out of the bylaws. So that would go, in my mind, would go first because it's the, yeah, okay. That's fine. And now we're saying an hour and a half for the bylaws. So we're good? doing it. So I would do an uh, hour and a half for, with the by, for the bylaws. That brings you to 1130. Um, lunch break for 45 minutes. That brings you to 12, 15, 12, 45. So we'll say one o'clock and then work for two hours on the proposal and call it a day. That's three o'clock, nine to three. Pamela has a hand up. So, um, my suggestion was going to be from nine to two with a working lunch. Um, Yes. And um, when we last met last year, I think that that time worked well. We probably only need maybe 45 minutes for uh, a warming up exercise and icebreaker, okay. as, especially if, you know, the key is that everybody is there on time, right? We will have, Philip and I will have coffee and, you know, continental breakfast there. So, you don't need to worry about those things. We can have coffee and tea and, and breakfast for folks. Um, and then we'll also provide a lunch and some other snacks so that people, and because you're in the large activity room, we can move around. We'll have access to the internet and um, a television screen if we if we need it. I, I, um, if you, I, I would say this, if you plan on, um, going in from from nine to three as as your outside hours and um if folks are feeling really tired at the lunch break like they really need a break want to walk around then we know we're ending at three and if they feel like they can continue on and have a working lunch then you know you might be able to to end at two but you i think mm -hmm. you, at a at a minimum you need that large um, time to really accomplish things. What what I've what we've found in the last uh, couple of years is that in the retreat, um, your agenda is set for the year and some planning, but your your it's really the strategic plan that you're going to use to guide the commission forward, and your work will be done um, in the subsequent meetings that come in in the, in the year. And I think your two agenda items are going to take a lot of time. Um, um, I don't know what discussion you are planning around the bylaws, but um, the first one will certainly take a lot of time. And if there are additional or major changes of discussions around the by, uh, around the bylaws, that also will take a, a lot of time. So to be to remind everyone, the bylaws are not going to be revisited. <laughs> The work is to see, right. given that we have completed the bylaws, what work does it seem is going to flow out of that? So that's, yes. I just wanted to say that. The other thing is, is am I the only one who would rather say 11 to 5 instead of 9 to 3? I am great with the number of hours. I am great with the, you know, food. <laughs> but um, if nobody else would rather start at 11, we'll start at 9. Just wanted to ask. Um, I'm wondering if you have another commitment in the morning. I would rather start later only because I'm a morning sleeper in person. Yeah, I do have uh, another commitment. So I, I could have, commitment. have another commitment. We could. I'm open to starting at 11 so you could fulfill your commitment and then come to the retreat. I mean, if there so was... Are there others? Who, if there was consensus here to start at nine, I would forgo the other commitment. I'm just wondering if it's six to one half a dozen the other for people... Would others be open to starting at 11? Please raise your hand or thumb. 
you're open to starting at 11. Jay. Yeah, that's possible. And Liz, can you start at 11 or do you it want to come at It doesn't five? matter to me. It just doesn't, doesn't matter. matter to you. Okay. So, so if it doesn't matter to us, to yeah. Let's go at 11 so you can do what you need to do. Thank you. Jay, did let's you start at 11? Were you going to chime yeah, in? Jay? Jay had his thumb up. Did. Oh, okay. great. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Okay, great. So we started 11 and we, I don't know, Philip and Pamela, is that okay for you guys? You're both smiling. So I'm assuming that's a yes. <laughs> or you're not going to, it's the Chinese smile. Right, it means right. No, yeah, but yeah. you're not going to say anything. Yeah. <laughs> so Pamela, did you? I mean, so, I mean, whatever time you choose, we will both be there. Uh, my preference personally would have been earlier, um, but um, I will make it work. I have um, vision problems in the evenings. Um, yeah. So driving late, oh, driving at that's night. Right. right. But I will, I'll figure that out. I'll, I'll, I will make it work. So not an issue. Then why well, one thing I could offer is that I could offer to drive you at the end if you need it. I leave that as an open offer. If that's the only constraint. All righty. Philip, okay with you? Uh, I um I will make myself available. I'm sorry if I'm making life difficult for you both. I'm very sorry. You're okay. Okay. So right, so eleven it is. Yeah, the item. <laughs> I do believe that might have been our last agenda item, except for open it up for public comment again. Uh, so just really quick, 11 to 5, got it. Um, I think Human Rights Day is next on the list. Is that what you all have? Yeah. Yeah. I, I really like the idea of having something, a reading as we've always done of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. I've always thought that was a good idea. I could never go. I was never in town when it happened, but I love the idea of it, not at the Bang Center. And I wondered if we could do it together with Northampton or somebody else, because I think other town, somebody had invited us last year. I wasn't here, so I wasn't involved in whatever happened. Um, was it Northampton Human Rights Commission that invited us last year? So maybe we can invite them, do it together with somebody else. Do you remember, Pamela? I, I don't re re recall. I probably was <laughs> Northampton. Um, but um, Philip and I have been talking about, there's another program that occurs in town um, uh, that uh, involves a middle school and middle school students. And so we thought we might inquire whether they might want to join with us. Um, so their program occurs um, uh, in the afternoon. So we would probably be um, changing the time to sort of match their programming. Ours would start when theirs would end. Um, but it, I thought it would be nice <laughs> to have one uh, program. So the and I, someone will have to correct me if I'm, I'm, if I'm wrong, but it's my belief that there's a teacher at the middle school whose class um, writes and draws um, for each of the articles of the uh, Declaration of Human Rights, and they're put on display uh, in the wow. library. <laughs> and so the idea of combining the pro those two programs into one is what we were thinking that we would try to pursue. That sounds awesome to me. It really sounds wonderful. So we, you know, we haven't gotten we we haven't extended the ask yet. So we're not we can't guarantee that they will say yes, but we're gonna that I think is what we'd like to pursue is to work with the middle school students in the school around their celebration of the Declaration of Human Rights. Are there other thoughts about this among commission members? Liz, do you have your hand up? Is that you or no, it's my cursor moving around. Thoughts, comments about doing it with the middle school? 
I think middle school's great. I think Northampton is great. I think whatever y'all decide is great. Just give me the time so I'll, I can get it in my book and get there. <laughs> Okay, then. Silas? I think that also sounds wonderful. I was just wondering <laughs> if at some point we need to decide who like does the speaking and, and what, how, what, how that works in terms of the process of it. I'm sure that may be a later date meeting, but I was just curious. So it's been um, really very informal in, in the past. Uh, there are scripts uh, of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights that's passed out among the participants and someone starts reading and we just do round robin until we're until we've gone through. Um, so I, I think the beauty of and this will be a conversation that we'll need to have with the middle school. Uh, uh, um, the beauty of having the middle school students involved is that um, when I went over last year to look at their work, they they have um, sort of abbreviated versions of the articles um, with a little drawing. So it might be really nice to have them actually, and I think most, if not all of the articles are represented, it might be nice to have them do their articles in order and talk about the, the illustration that they, that accompanies it. So it, you know, I think it elevates their event a little bit and I think just provides more meaning than, I mean, the, the declaration is lovely to read, um, but I think there would there's more to it if we if we sort of combine forces if they're uh, amenable to that. That's just great. Really glad I'll be in town this year. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, so, so then that, that it sounds like I will reach out to the middle school. Was that all right? Thank you. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, so now we're back to public comments. Uh, Ronnie, before you do, oh, before you do okay. public comment, can you just, um, I don't know if you all have seen the minutes, but if you all could vote on that, that'd be great. If not, then you could push it back to your next meeting, but they are provided in the meeting packet. No, let's vote on the minutes. Um, Liz, you know what to say. I make a motion that we accept the minutes as written from the September 18th meeting. I need a second. We'll second that. I In favor, will... say aye. Aye. Uh, Liz? Oh. Joy Rizwana? Aye. Uh, Deborah? Aye. Silas, you weren't here. Ronnie, yes. Jay, you weren't here. Jacinta is not here. So we accept the. Perfect. Thank you. Notes. All right. So that's all done. Um, where are we now? Public comment. Oh, Pamela. Pamela, you're muted. I promise I won't interrupt your meeting uh, much more in the future. Um, but I did think of one thing that, that has occurred in the last 48 hours. If Philip is able to share screen, um, I thought we might show the HRC uh, website because we have been working with uh, the, the director to um, revise your, your web page. And we got late this afternoon a version of it so just you know it's not finalized yet but we're in the process of, of working on the, on updating the web page can you all see that mm -hmm. yes yes so the mission was left up here uh pretty same meetings Kind that of, meeting then, time correct, by the way? We no, that will need to be changed. Day. We're meeting tomorrow. It's in my notes for changing it yeah. to six, six o'clock, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then this is kind of the new feature here. So all the statements here, they used to be kind of in paragraph form. So now they will be in pull down form. So when you see a statement that you would want to see from the past, 
you can pull it down and see what the commission kind of said about that statement. Wow. Um, awesome. Members all happening right here. And then a community form for anybody that is interested in doing so. Uh, you want to put chair next to Ronnie's name, please? Yes, I will make that note. Thank you. <laughs> are you are you stepping down, Liz? No, I I it says chair next to my name, but not yours. I'm trying to make sure you get your due. Oh my God, they did this before. Can you believe this? I'm not sure why, but I talked to Jen Moiston because I saw this because somebody pointed it out to me, and I looked and I thought, why is it that I can't be a chair? Why why is it I'm not noticed? My the thing is taken out, and Jen corrected it. And it's gone again. We we will correct that. So it, it was probably just an error on whatever um, it is that we were going back and forth on. But it will be corrected tomorrow morning. Same we have a error. nine, nine o'clock meeting. It will be up by 9 one Same Perfect. error twice. I'm calling out the town on this. <laughs> what, is that? what is that saying? Just because you're not yeah. paranoid doesn't mean no one's out to get you. Something like that. Um, so I, if we're if we're coming to a close, I just want to um, say out loud something that is in my name on my box. Um, I am non-binary, and my pronouns are they them. So probably three or four times, folks use she to refer to me, which I don't get stressed about. But because um, like I know what I look like, you know. So really, um, you know, I'm not a pain in the ass, but I do want to remind people. Well, thank you for the reminder. And, and every time I do it, because I will do it more than I probably think about. So just keep reminding me until I get it right 100% of the time. And I love you all. It's all good. And I'll remind you again as needed. <laughs> I just also want to point out that we have a vacancy, as you can see. We did, was supposed to have a um, student was supposed to be interviewed last Friday. That interview never happened not sure what where it stands right now i'm not sure if philip knows where it stands right now um the so, uh, people were sick on friday so the interview did not go through i know they are reaching back out to the student and so i, I don't know where i will see you tomorrow if you want me to remind her you, you can do so <laughs> <laughs> all right one thing I would really like, if there's any way to do it before the retreat, it's very hard. If she is invited to join the commission, it would be very, very hard after we've just had a retreat for a young person without a lot of experience to sort of, or for anyone really to have to jump in. So it would be really important that any new member participate in the retreat. All righty. Okay, so then the next, there's no meeting for November. The next meeting is the human, is the um, retreat. Um, I don't know about December. Do we decide that at the retreat or is it, do we not have a meeting because it's the holidays? I'm not really sure. December 18th. But December 18th. Close to the meeting. Do, we, do we have a meeting usually? Philip, Pamela, we do. Okay, so let's say the next meeting is on December 18th at 6 p.m. Um, and are there any other topics that we did not reasonably anticipate and did not discuss? Um, just if we have, we had any complaints in the last month or so, Pamela, because we haven't updated any, any complaints that we've had. If we, we may not have had any, so. So, um, I have not received any complaints okay. on wood in the last, uh, couple of months. Um, so. Well, that's, uh, that's good news. I don't, know if it, I, mm. <laughs> I don't know if it's good news or not, but somebody on the question of complaints, somebody else, one of the residents of Amherst asked me, uh, what happens when there are repeat complaints? Um, do we take any action? Do, does the complaint person or organization complained against, does that person get sort of reported to the town council? Does anything happen? And my answer was that I don't know. But maybe that's something to deal with when we talk about the whole complaints process um, in the bylaws discussion at the retreat. 
but I probably should have told you I was asked that question. Okay, so we're all done. I'm really, thank you, new members. It's good to have so many of us all here. And um, the meeting of the Human Rights Commission is now closed at 7.32 p.m. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Bye. 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 See you soon. Bye. Bye. Thanks.